Okay, this is the thing. I haven't talked to you guys, you subscribers, for some time in the video. So if you've just clicked on this video because of the title and thought, well, okay, this is it. I finally get to tell you a bit more about this channel, then don't worry. It wasn't a misleading title. Um, I started off filming uh, or rather interviewing bands in around say 2013 um, for a magazine which is now defunct uh, called Bleeder Magazine, Bleeder as in bleeding and it was fun. Um, I went around in a festival called Arc Tangent just interviewing people with an iPad that I borrowed from my workplace um, and was just you know, talking to bands about what I'd seen of them doing on stage literally a few minutes before I'd see them on stage and think, right, I'm going to talk to them now. And that kamikaze approach was uh, fun um, and informative because I'd like to think um, and I have been told that people who were not really aware of alternate or alternative bands would watch it and identify the fact that I was quite infused of what I was actually seeing um, and that because I hadn't really known much about the band or really researched them that that kind of honesty was uh, refreshing so I did that with various bands like the Historical Injury, um, St. Pierre, Snake Invasion a lot of bands from Bristol because the uh, festival was from there um, and yeah I started writing about bands and even though that was fun I kind of figured out that people weren't really reading the interviews so at some point in uh, 20 15 I started um, interviewing again on camera the bands that I had been writing about most primary in that respect was Hot Gothic um, a free piece at the time with Sean Clifford on keyboard and uh, Jonathan Campbell on bass and Stacy Picard or Malibu Stacy as he likes to be known in that uh, band he was on vocals and that was also fun, um, mainly because Stacey has got a fantastic way of addressing the audience um, and also talking about lots of transgressive uh, issues as well as doing good music, so he was quite a character. Um, so fast forwarding through 2015, lots of interviews, lots of bands, kamikaze style, I started filming them uh, doing their music because that felt more honest. I felt in many ways that even though I wasn't conscious of it, I was actually interviewing the bands because I wanted to promote an aspect of uh, myself in order to get a certain amount of praise, uh, which may come as a surprise to some people because I'm known for that guy who films bands for free. But yeah, I've got to be honest, uh, I, I started to become aware of the fact that I was interviewing them because of what I could gain rather than what I could give. Um, so in 2016... Uh, from late 2015 I started filming bands um, such as Cold in Berlin, Calvo Louise um, and also bands that I think a lot of people who have been on the scene for some time have known about for some time but I didn't uh, such as Fat White Family. Um, I think that I was a good counterpoint uh, for people who weren't necessarily aware of the alternative scene um, for them to find through me bands that they would otherwise would never have known about because of the way mainstream magazines work. I mean, let's face it, um, you are probably aware or you may not be aware of the fact that I don't have much love for the enemy. They work through um, pleasing advertisers because that's how they make their money. They're a free magazine. And as advertisers want a certain demographic in, so obviously they will want to have bands such as Blossoms or anything that is, um, in my eyes, uh, airbrushed and vacuous, vacuous um, in their pages. So obviously certain bands that don't fit that kind of archetype won't get a look in. Uh, bands that are like Hot Gothic, um, that are true in terms of not using uh, a dirty, fucked up attitude to make themselves look cool, but this, but just because they basically are. And I mean that as a compliment. If any of the band members are watching, I'm sure they'll realize that. So I started filming bands, um, making sure that people knew where those bands were playing by putting words on the screen, if they were playing at the windmill, if the promoter was Tim Perry, if they were playing at the Lock Tavern, if the promoter was uh, Roadkill Records, 
aka Josh Cooper, if they were playing at New River Studios, aka if they were playing through the promoters Fluffer Records, who put on the Fluffer Pit Parties, who have now um, decided to bring those back again. Thank God that is official, because those bands that play those shows and that format of having the band in the middle and the people on the outside, I think that is awesome. And I think ultimately, if in any way you have not experienced this, then you really should. So please do, this is an unofficial advertisement, go down to their show, um, which should be on the 22nd of July, which is a Saturday. And if for whatever reason you're not at the show, then hey, you will see videos of that on this channel, if not on Fluffer TV. So, um, after some time of me filming live gigs uh, and enjoying that, I decided to do some live sessions uh, via uh, videoing bands in various different locations, ultimately leading up to me meeting up with Margot Broom, who has produced Shame, Fat White Family, Goat Girl and various other acts on the South London scene and beyond. Um, and that was cool. Um, it kind of spoiled me because her sound is so good I don't feel right filming at live venues as much as I do so if you do get any live gigs on this channel it's worth pressing play it will be uh, not crystal clear but it will definitely be clearer than most as I've been told by bands the microphone I use has been pretty um, useful in inheriting what was actually playing at the gig in a good way so there's that um, I've been doing official music videos for bands like Frauds, Leg Puppy um, and again I'm slowly moving into the idea that I only really want to do live shows um, and also official music videos simply because of the control I have and not having to deal with or rather not deal with uh, an audience um, which even though there's a skill to that and it's fun um, it, it's becoming a caricature of itself um, so yeah there's that but yeah as a new subscriber if you've become uh, interested enough this interested on, on checking out this channel sorry I'm, I'm a bit drunk I've just been to meat raffle uh, there's a bank called meat raffle just type in meat raffle as in meat as in carcass of animal or flesh of bone <laughs> and then raffle as in to win something um, yeah type that in and you should come up with some uh, some cool videos they did a, a session for myself and Margot Broom in a uh, in Hermitage Works her studio um, but yeah, I've just come to see, I've just seen them in Hackney. My point is that I like doing um, music videos and live sessions now rather than live gigs. So that's what you'll come to see from the channel. There'll few, be a few interviews. Um, if you're seeing this in the playlist, and this should be the interview of Lou Smith, who has um, done a, a video for Fat White Family and DOP, and another Fat White Family video, um, and him being interviewed by Lars Thornton of uh, Intro of La. I feel like I'm just name dropping now, but my point is, the point of this entire video is to tell you that yes, uh, ultimately um, you have become part of a channel which wants to show you some of the stuff which you may not have actually been aware of, or if you have been aware of it, to see it in a way which um, I see it and I hope that way is beneficial to your enjoyment or further enjoyment of bands therein. Keep watching. <laughs> This is Clark Kent's Rock and Roll Review. Thank you for listening to a drunk man. <laughs>